Hello viewers, this is Neela Ma'am and you are watching my channel on learning English. Today I will be dealing with the email writing. Children, gone are the times when we had to wait for days, sometimes months for letters. As you can see in this case, we have a picture of a pigeon. This is a homing pigeon. Homing pigeons were known to fly back home and they work only in one direction and therefore they were used to carry messages. So in order to send a message, you had to first send these pigeons to the person and the person, whenever they felt the need to send you an urgent message, they would just tie up the message, attach the message to it and let it go. And these pigeons will fly great distances and come home bringing the message. We have another picture here. Picture of a little bottle. And in this case, it not only took some days or some months, it even took even years for letters. For people actually put letters inside the bottle and set it sail on the seas. And these bottles would have gone through many adventures before you could hope they would land some distant shore. In fact, such bottles are known to travel over different separate continents, I mean two different continents, over many seas. And if your name and contact number is there in the letter, somebody or from some other continent would have found your letter and they would just call you up and say, I found your letter. Hi, how are you doing? So children, gone are the times when letters took a long time to travel. We have now come to the email, the most commonly used email, where the letter goes electronically in a matter of few seconds. Handwritten letters are still used, uh, but let's go to the next part of it. That is the uh, that is to the email writing. Email or the electronic mail. The candidates will be given a specific situation and will be required to write the text for a notice based on given directions. Number B, write an email on the same context as the notice. So you find here that these two are closely interlinked since they deal basically with the same topic. And you will find when you write the notice, a great part of your notice is reflected on the, in your email. You say the notice is in-house, as you put it up in the school notice board, it's just an example, and the letter will most probably be sent to the principal of a neighboring school. So, since they both deal with the same topic, they are closely interlinked, and so let us see the topic itself. Let us see to the topic itself. The topic says, your school is hosting an inter-school art competition. Write a notice for your school informing them of the event. Number two, that is B, write an email to the principal of a neighboring school informing her of the event and requesting her to send a team to participate. So, what are you doing here? You are writing a notice of the inter-school debate and putting it up in the, on the school notice board. And then, you are writing an, a letter to the principal of a neighboring school and informing her of the event. So let's see now how to do it. 
children, so uh, another thing is there. Whenever you are doing email writing, remember there is always a notice. And this notice, I have done it in my previous video, in my earlier class. Let's look at the notice, what it says. Art attack, that's the title. And then, Silver Jubilee Inter-School Art Competition, the topic. And then we have the date, that is 12th May 2020. And the timings from 9 a.m. to 12 noon in the second line. And then we have the venue, that is Art Room St. Mary's High School. And of course the text. So once again, I have recapitulated the format of the notice writing. Now let us go to the format of the email writing. Now when we look at the format of the email writing, we find that both are closely interlinked, as I told you. And to certain parts, some parts are unique to the email, and some certain parts are similar to the formal letter. Okay, let's see to the first line, what the email says on the first line. Principal blue bells at the rate of gmail.com. Now, you don't have to write to just before the principal. As you can see, when you open the computer screen, you will find 2 is already written there. As you can see in the slide, 2 is already written there. And as you know, emails are written on the computer. So, no need of writing 2. The first line, that is the principal bluebells at the rate of gmail.com, which is the receiver's address. And it has three elements, the receiver's address. The letter, the address which will take your letter to that person or the E address and it has three elements. You need to remember these three elements. It is the person's designation along with the organization. And then we have the at sign and then the domain that is the gmail.com. So these are the three elements you have to take into consideration and it is uh, good that you write the person's designation, sorry, designation along with the organization because this is much more plausible and the address is much more plausible rather than writing the individual's name. So now let's go to the second line of the email which says subject and again you find subject is already written there in the, on the sorry, computer. So again you do not have to write the word subject. All you need now is to refer back to the notice and pick up the second line of the notice. You can see in the slide, the second line of the notice and put it or paste it in the second line of the email. It's just like doing copy paste, copy paste of what you have written, not anyone else. So the second line, that is Silver Jubilee Inter-School Art Competition, to be written in the second line of the email, that is in the subject. Let's have that slide. So you have here Silver Jubilee Inter-School Art Competition, no writing to no writing, subject is already there on the computer screen. And for this, we have half a mark. Half a mark each. Half a mark for the first, that is the receiver's address, and then, of course, the subject. And it is the whole question is out of five marks, and we have already scored half and half, one mark. Now, can we go to the salutation? Here we have Dear Madam along with the comma. So the salutation Dear Madam or Dear Sir along with comma, no slash. Follow as you do in the formal letter. Again you get half a mark for your salutation for Dear Madam or Dear Sir. 
Now let me jump straight into the subscription. And I'll be back in a minute for the body. So let's go to the subscription. Thanking you along with the comma. Yours faithfully. Comma. Remember children, capital Y. No apostrophe S. Apostrophe S is wrong. So yours faithfully along with comma and your full name. No block letters again. And if you wish, you can write the designation as I have written here, Secretary Art and Culture. But what is compulsory for you is to write yours faithfully along with the comma correctly and your full name which will give you another half a mark. To give you another half a mark. So, coming to the body. Now, the body. The body here, we have three elements within the body and we are left with three marks. Remember the two marks we have already scored. And so, we have three elements within the body and as earlier as I told you, we need to remember two things, two elements which are important, which I'll come slowly. So the first one is the opening sentence, which is again very, very important, your opening sentence. It can be a couple of sentences or a sentence. Now, this opening sentence of yours could be something like, our school is celebrating a silver jubilee this year. As part of the celebrations, we are hosting a series of competitions and we are beginning with Art Attack and Inter-School Art Competition. So this is the opening sentence and you can see it's a reflection of the event which is given in the subject line. It basically tells us, talks about the topic. In fact, you are informing the principle of the event. So your opening sentence talks about the topic and also leads into what the body is. What's the it leads to what uh, into what is the body? So let's see. We have half marks for the opening sentence. And coming to the next, we'll again refer back to the notice for the details. The details, these are the details. That is the date, 12th May 2020, the time and the venue. So this details has to be just picked up and put it, it has to be put up in the email, giving the details. So you have, you can write without any flowery language, you can just put the details there. It is, you can write, it will be held on 12th May 2020 from 9 a.m. to 12 noon in the art room St. Mary's High School. Just straight and no flowery language. You need to pick up all the details from the notice and write it down. So now, one thing I told you in the beginning, you have done that thing, to remember that element, you need to inform the principal of the event. So we have already done, inform the principal along with the details. Now to the expression. You, the second part I told you, the second element to be remembered, is to ask the principal to send a team to participate in the event. So we have to do it right now. Please do send a team of five participants for the event. The topic will be given, you can add this, the topic will be given to the participants an hour before the start of the competition. And you are done requesting the principal to send the team to participate in the event. For your expression, you get two marks. So, the expression of the body we are, you have get two marks. Now, a polite way to end the email. A 
polite way to end the email could be yes the slide we look forward to your school's participation in the competition so this is a polite way to end the email and we score another half up and we are done with the five marks and the email let's have a look at the final email So here is the final email. Children, I hope my lessons are a help to you to write good notices and emails. And I would suggest for assignments to write emails to all the notices you have written as assignment which I gave in my earlier class. So till then, keep safe, stay home. Thank you.